I had a chance to be exposed for at least a month uh, to suffering and death and pain and tears of many, many citizens of this world in different countries. I accessed the information and I've seen different scenes that were so painful to the heart. I've seen a medical doctor that was working in Italy for at least two weeks without seeing his family. And when he had the chance to see his, uh, his son, he was forbidden to, uh, to embrace him. And he tried to explain him and engage in a dialogue with his son in telling him, don't touch me. And the child looks like he could not really grasp the concept and understand why my dad, my daddy didn't give me permission to embrace him, to give him a hug as I usually do. And all of a sudden, when he saw the, the, the child pausing after two weeks, uh, questioning himself, why daddy doesn't give me a permission to, to embrace him? The world is changed and we Christians have the scripture, have the Bible, and yet have questions about ourselves, about the future we have and the future of our families, the future of the people around us. I recognize that oftentimes we did not appreciate the value of life, of every second we lived. And here we are when the world is turned upside down and society is mourning towards a self-destruction. The only sin we have is that we are too many. And there are people above us that count us, not as names, but as simple numbers. And I would like to tell you that in this time of troubles, when fear reigns our society, when nothing is like it used to be, when society and life on planet Earth have changed dramatically, my dear fellow, God has a message for us. I would like to introduce to you a Bible verse that is found in Micah chapter 5, verse 7. And the remnant of Jacob shall be in the midst of many people as the dew from the Lord, as the showers upon the grass, that there is not for the man, nor waits for the Son of Man. That's a beautiful, beautiful description how people, how Christians should behave in time of crisis. Uh, I have been uh, uh, in a store a couple of weeks ago before the crisis come, and uh, I saw everybody piling piling food and toilet paper and everything like a babel tower in their card and i went there i bought a a, a bottle of oil and a, a, a bag of rice and uh, someone is looking to me and says so this is all what you buy i said yes sir but uh, the crisis is coming you know that we will be shut down and quarantine and we will not go to the, the grocery so what are you going to do i said sir I do believe in a God that can multiply the food. I do believe in a Jesus that can help us. And the gentleman is looking at me, what do you mean? How do you know that God, your God is multiplying or this God that you invoke uh, can multiply food? I said, I went through the valley of shadow of death for six years. And I had my troubles and my sufferings and I had the chance to see death every day and every night. And Jesus, my Savior, was with me holding my hand through that valley. One single second, if I would not have had Jesus with me, I would have been dead in the next second. That's why today, brothers and sisters, we do have a Savior. And I do believe that this Savior who gave manna to the people of God for 40 years is the same Savior that can multiply and increase the little or the last tablespoon of rice you may have in your home. I do believe in miracles. Wash your hands. Keep six feet distance. Don't sneeze. Don't cough around people. But don't forget to pray to your God. These heavenly graces are acquired by the experience of years and by a life of holy endeavor and firm adherence to the right, the children of God 
were selling their destiny. Unless we understand the importance of the moments that are swiftly passing into eternity and make ready to stand in the great day of God, we shall be unfaithful servants. The watchman is to know the time of night. Everything is now clothed with solemnity that all who believe the truth for this time should realize they should act in reference to the day of God. The judgments of God are about to fall upon the world and we need to be preparing for that great day. In regard to today's society, I do have a very interesting statement from a book that is called The Keys of This Blood, written by Malachi Martin. Uh, it's uh, Dallas Morning News called him, the, in biblical times, they would have called him a prophet. Now, it may be true because he has seen the view of Rome uh, in regard to the future of citizens of this world. It was written in 1990. We are in 2020. It looks like it's amazing how this man, Malachi Martin, had the vision to describe and define our behavior and the dynamics of our society in the present time. No holes are bare because once this competition has been decided, the world and all that is in it, our way of life and individuals and citizens of nations, our families and our jobs, which most of us have always taken this for granted, all will have been powerfully and radically altered forever. No one can be accepted from its effect and no sector of our life will remain untouched. Soon we will become a number. Our names, our jobs, our way of life will be eradicated forever. Why? Because a group of people have decided so. And you, me, all of us have one sin. That sin is that we are too many. In order to save the planet, people have to disappear. And unfortunately, at this time of this terrible pandemic, nobody takes responsibility. We just die and that's it. Nobody will be guilty ever for the operation of this pandemic. I guess only God in the time of judgment will relieve will bring to surface who is in reality the guilty one, who is in reality the one that made people die so soon, so sudden. One of the most powerful signs of the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ is the collapse of Europe. And United States and Europe do have a specific bond of unity, cultural unity, uh, historical unity, uh, religious unity and even political unity. They do have the same goal. They do have the same aim. They do envision future in the same like manner. So that's why even though we are in the United States today, I do believe we really, really care for what's going on in Europe because whatsoever happens in Europe today, uh, that will impact America and vice versa. What's happening in America, that will, will impact Europe. So I would like to share with you a few documents that uh, I think they will place our study and our conversation in a proper prophetical environment. And then we come to some biblical conclusions. As the European Union unravels, the continent is reverting to divisions that go back to centuries. That's the signal one of the first arguments that show that Europe is cracking in its unity. Europe coming apart before our eyes, say 30 top intellectuals, group of historians and writers published manifesto warning the crisis of populism. Why we must not let Europe break apart. Timothy Garton Ash. So there are people that are interested to keep Europe united. More than half of the Europeans believe that European Union is likely to collapse within a generation. They cannot be United States of Europe. Uh, why we cannot achieve that goal is we have here United States of America. In Europe, they should have United States of Europe. Why that cannot happen? Is there somewhere in the scripture where God may have obstructed this union to create United States of Europe. The Europe we have built 
since then is under attack. Garton Ash describes himself as a liberal internationalist. He is a supporter of what he calls the free world and liberal democracy, represented in his view by the European Union, the United States as a super power. Timothy Garton uh, received a Charlemagne Prize in 2019. Uh, why Charlemagne Prize? Because Charlemagne was beside Napoleon and others, uh, and Caesar, Caesar, Charlemagne, and Napoleon, they try all to create again, to rebuild the former Roman Empire. He's an internationalist and his interest is to keep Europe united. Before I go farther, I would like to define what is this internationalism all about. I do have David Rockefeller memoirs, page 405. Uh, he writes under the chapter Proud Internationalist. Rockefeller was an internationalist as well. And uh, what he says in the page 405, some even believe we are part of a secret cabal working against the best interest of the United States, characterizing my family and, my, and me as an internationalist and of conspiring with others around the world to build a more integrated global political and economical structure, one world if you will. If that is the charge, I stand guilty and I'm proud of it. So what uh, Rockefeller uh, says in his, his own book called Memoir, I am suspected, and I was suspected all my life, me and my family, to be part of that group, secret cabal, conspiring against the United States for the sake of internationalism. Uh, for the propagation and promoting of a one world government. Why is still Europe disintegrating? Because this is what everybody sees us, especially now with this pandemic, all the countries close the borders. Hungary shut down the borders. Poland shut down the borders. France shut down the borders. Germany barely survives. Brussels, the place where, you know, they're supposed to have the, the leadership of European community and looks like they are speechless. They don't know how to handle the crisis and Europe just breaks, cracks. Uh, the coronavirus pandemic has proven how artificial uh, this union was created. Uh, I mean, the countries are just forgetting about, about each other. France goes economically straight in full, uh, full recession. Germany barely survived and hanging on there, but not for long. The other feeble countries of Europe do the same thing, but there is no true unity. Italy is claiming that nobody cares about them. The rest of the countries do the same thing. Everybody in Europe takes care of its own country, its own language, its own kind its own its own uh, nation so that shows that Europe was not really fusioned 100% but if was a fusion was due to marriage political involvement and some other uh, links Jesus said because the scripture cannot be broken and whereas thou sowest iron mixed with a merry clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of man, but they shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with the clay. Europe is coming apart before our eyes, says the intellectuals. The dream is saying the same thing. So the ten kingdoms that have been produced as a consequence of the collapse of Roman Empire formed the European community today. Opinion Global Insight, Europe starts to think the unthinkable, breaking up. The world holds more risk for European Union than at any time since the end of Cold War, Tony Barber. So everybody observes and everybody notices that Europe is collapsing. Brothers and sisters, my dear friends, Christians, I think that the disintegration of Europe European community is the sign that shows that Jesus is coming. And in the days of these kings, meaning in the days of European community, shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. For as much as you sowest that the stone was cut out of the mountain without a hand, and it breaks in pieces the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver, and the gold. The great God had made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter, and the dream is certain, and the interpretation thereof 
sure. So what Daniel explains to Nebuchadnezzar goes beyond the centuries and reaches Till today, when we have this conversation, my dear friends, we are living in a tremendous prophetical uh, fulfillment. Europe is disintegrating. It's the end of the dream uh, of Book of Daniel, chapter 2. And that shows that after the collapse of Europe, there is only one kingdom left is the kingdom of God, the kingdom that will never pass to another kingdom, and the kingdom that will be forever. My dear brothers and sisters, that's my extraordinary discovery for you tonight. The European community disintegrates, and that's for me the sign that Jesus is coming very, very soon. In fact, we have come to a time when God's sacred work is represented by the feet of the image in which the iron was mixed with the mirror clay. Ellen G. White says we are living in a time of these Kings, we are living in a time of these powers where the iron and the clay are mixed. And we saw the evidences. We saw that Europe is shaking. Europe is cracking. This pandemic brought such a sudden surprise. Terrifying news for these countries that everybody takes care of everybody and it's a kissing goodbye. I mean, Hungary doesn't care about Poland. Poland doesn't care about Romania. Romania doesn't care about German. German doesn't care about France. France doesn't care about... It is an apparent concern. Not because people are bad, no. But because everybody, France, has its own problems that cannot handle. Germany has its own problems that cannot handle. Uh, uh, Poland has its own problems that cannot and Spain has its own problems. Italy has its own problems. Everybody takes care of itself. They forget of each other. And that is the proof for me, my friends, that this pandemic proved how united Europe was indeed. We have this, even America's re resources to fight a viral plague aren't limitless, and they will become more limited by the day as individuals lose jobs, businesses close, and American prosperity gives away to poverty. The world will be just uh, in a chaos. The people uh, all over the world will crumble for food. In India, China, Russia, and the cities of America, Thousands of men and women are dying of starvation. The moneyed men, because they have the power, control the market. They purchase at low rates all that can obtain and then sell at greatly increased price. This means starvation to the poorer classes. What is the result? And will result in a civil war. There will be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation. My dear friends, I think that we are coming close to the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I, I want to go home sincerely. I'm tired. And to live in this world struggling in misery, fear, incertitude, I hold my hands and my heart and my faith strong to the hand of my Savior, Jesus Christ. Kings and rulers and governors are, have placed upon themselves the brand of Antichrist and are represented as a dragon who goes to make war with the saints, with those who keep the commandments of God and who have the fate of Jesus. In their enmity against the people of God, they show themselves guilty of the choice of Barabbas. My dear friends, it doesn't matter who we are, Jesus is coming. And we cannot rely on anybody at this very moment. I appeal to your heart today that you may turn your eyes towards Jesus and see His beautiful smile for you. See, hear His voice, which is the most beautiful music. The Lord loves you. The Lord is the one that can give you strength and courage. Today, in this time of crisis, give your heart to the Lord Jesus. Kneel down with me in prayer and have that moment of joy to pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you very much for giving us a chance to be together with our friends. I pray for those that are going through suffering and pain and sorrow. I pray for those that want to see you coming on the cloud of heaven. Give us strength, give us wisdom. Help us to open the Bible, to take our time to kneel down before you and to talk to you. Please 
touch the hearts of those that listen to the message. And if there are people that are discouraged, alone at home, and they don't have the luxury of tomorrow, be with them, Heavenly Father. Discover yourself to them and give them thy love, thy peace, thy compassion. We thank you once again in the name of Jesus.